If you're able, just just grab your neighbor hand on the left and the right. Father, thank you for the hand that we're holding. We gently squeeze our neighbor hand to let them know whatever they've been through. Thank God they didn't kill them. We gently squeeze our neighbor hand a second time to let them know that we believe that the worst is behind them and the very best is ahead of them. And then God, on today, someone came to this gathering and say, I want to know what a miracle feels like. We gently squeeze our neighbor hand to let them know that they're standing next to a miracle. Amen. Now, God, on today, let them not see me, but let them see you. Let them, let them not hear me, but let them hear you. And when all is said and done, we thank you that your name will be glorified. We know that your women will be edified and the very devil will be horrified. Because we ask it in the only name that matters, and that is the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. And the people who know that you're walking, talking, breathing miracle, release the hand and give God a hand of praise in this place. Oh, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my trouble. Oh, taste and see that the Lord, that the Lord is, he is absolutely good. We're so honored and delighted to be here on today. This is our first time in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. Amen. Amen. So so honored and delighted and uh, it's such a joy and delighted to first of all meet your pastor. Can you thank God for your senior pastor, God, Dr. Ralph, God bless you. And then to this amazing woman of God, amen. God bless you. And, uh, and then thank you so very much. I had a divine connection with the speaker from this morning. I celebrate you, woman of God. God bless you. Amen. I'm so, I'm so delighted to be here. Um, your pastors have allowed us to bring some of our products with us. Uh, they're available somewhere in the Norfolk, somewhere out in the lobby. Our products are out there. And of course, you know, we've got two books. I'm from Trinidad. Anybody from Trinidad here? I'm from, all right, Trini. All right, God bless you. Amen. God bless you. And um, I go to Trinidad every year. Uh, I've adopted a domestic violent home in Trinidad for women, for battered women. And so all of the products that we sell is so we can help those who need to get shelter, amen, in times when they're going through some things, amen. And so, um, so my first book is entitled Dancing with Broken Bones, taken from Psalms 51 verse 7, where David says, allow me to hear joy and gladness that the bones that you have broken may dance again. And so that's the first book, Dancing with Broken Bones. And then my second book, um, I turned 50 this year, last year rather. <laughs> Amen. I turned 50. And... Uh, my second book is called Finally Me, From Pieces to Peace. He will keep you in perfect peace because your mind is stayed on him. And so in that book, it talks about the making of me, the meaning of me, the messy me, and the miracle me. Amen. Just, just how you go through a stage in your life. And sometimes many of us, and I think she spoke on finding Boaz, and I often tell people, I said that you cannot become we until you understand me. Come on. Yeah. So many real soft. Real, so many people want a we. But there cannot be a we. Don't look at it. This is a we symbol. This is a me. Until you understand what it took to make me the meaning of me, the making of me. Are y'all following me? Yeah. yeah, because Boaz without a purpose ain't good. When he comes, he doesn't come to complete me because one is a whole number. 
Y'all miss that. He comes to compliment me. Hello, somebody. And so that's finally me from pieces to piece that I get to celebrate the making of me and the meaning of me. So that's that book that's out there. And then we've got some other things that's out there that's going to bless you guys. I promise I'll sign all of them and it'll be a blessing to you. Um, there is a word from the Lord, uh, Isaiah chapter 45, Luke chapter 13. If you got your Bible, Isaiah chapter 45. And I get to preach to you guys twice in one day. I get to preach tonight also. I'm so excited about tonight, amen, but I'm, amen. So double for your trouble, amen. Somebody holler double, amen. God's going to give you double for your trouble, and so um. I'm excited about it. Um, and you know, sometimes God has given you just uh, a word for this season and this time. And I believe that this word is going to bless you tremendously. Isaiah chapter 45, verse number 2. And then Luke chapter 13, Isaiah 45. Amen. Amen. Isaiah 45, and what did I say in Luke chapter 13? Isaiah 45. I already love this conference. Amazing. Amazing, amazing. We've got some folks from Ghana in here. Yeah. I got to get... I go to Ghana every year, amen, for Archbishop Duncan Williams. Just love, just love going there. I got some folks from Nigeria. I went to Nigeria earlier this year for Pastor Paul Adivasa, the house on the rock, amen. I love going there. I'm going back there again later on this year. Uh, anybody from South Africa, South Africa, Cape Town, Amen, Johannesburg, I'm going down there. I'm just going to relocate in Africa, amen. The most powerful place on the planet, one of the most, amen, I mean, amen, amen, amen. Uh, Isaiah 45, verse number 2, and then Luke chapter 13. And let me read it from the New International Version Isaiah 45, verse number two. If you're there, go ahead and say amen. amen. And I will go before you and will level the mountains. I will break down gates of bronze and cut through bars of iron. I will give you hidden treasures, riches stored in secret place, so that you may know that I am the Lord, the God of Israel, who summoned you by name. For the sake of Jacob, my servant of Israel, my chosen, I have summoned you by name and bestowed unto you a title of honor. Though you do not acknowledge me, and I am the Lord, God, and there is no other apart from me, there is no God, and I will strengthen you, though you have not acknowledged me. Luke chapter 13, go to Luke chapter 13, Luke chapter 13, verse number 6, Luke chapter 13, verse number 6, and in that version, I'm going to read it from the King James Version, Luke chapter 13, verse number 6. He spoke also this parable, a certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down, why cumbers it in the ground? And he answered and said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig about it and dug it. And if it bear fruit well, 
And if not, then after that, you will cut it down. And he was teaching in one of the synagogue on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmities 18 years. And she was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called unto him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loose from your infirmities. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation, because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day, and said unto the people, There are six days in which men ought to work, in them therefore come and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. The Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, thou does not each of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, who Satan has bound, lo, these 18 years, be loose from this bound on the Sabbath day. Look, I need you guys to look particularly at that one key verse, verse number 13. That's where I want to park on today. And he laid his hands on her. Everybody said he laid his hands on her. And immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Come on, say neighbor. He laid his hands on her. And immediately, suddenly, she was made straight. She straightened up and began to glorify God. One more time. Look at your sister. Say, immediately after Jesus laid his hands on her, she was made straight and she begins to glorify God. Would you give God a glory praise up in here? Oh, come on, do the better than that. You can give him a glory praise in here. You may be seated in the presence of God on your way to your seat. Look your neighbor in the eye and say, neighbor, this year, this year, God is going to straighten it out. That's what I want to talk about. Come on, this year, God is going to straighten it out. How many of you need God to straighten some stuff out in your life? How many of you need God to straighten your children out, your marriage out, your job out? Come on, if you believe God to straighten it out, would you give God a straighten out praise right here? Would you open your mouth and glorify him? Would you bless him on today? Would you exalt him? Would you give him an advanced praise? For what he is about to do, what he's already done. Because eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. It hasn't entered the hearts of men what God got in store for us. I don't know about you, but I'm excited about 2018. I'm excited about 2018. I'm excited about 2018 because 18 is a powerful number in scripture. We all know that there's 18 spiritual gifts recorded in the Bible. There are 18 spiritual gifts. There's the gift of exaltation. There's the gift of prophecy. There's the gift of teaching. Don't, we, don't forget that gifts are different from fruits of the Spirit. In Galatians chapter 5, it talks about the fruits of the Spirit, which is love, joy, peace, gentleness, goodness, meekness, self-control. Against such there is no law. But the gifts of the Spirit is different from the fruits of the Spirit. That Jesus tells us that if we abide in him and his words abide in us, that we will bear fruit. That means every believer is called not just to be faithful, but called to be fruitful. Every believer is called not just to be faithful, but to be fruitful. God is not just going to examine your life to see if you are faithful, but he also wants to examine your life and to make sure that you are fruitful. It's one thing to be faithful. It's another thing to be fruitful. And that's why the gospel that we read on today in Luke chapter 13 is a very important gospel. In Luke chapter 13, Jesus shows up and he finds 
means of fig tree, and the fig tree is planted. The fig tree is planted in a particular soil. The fig tree has been planted for three years in a particular location. The fig tree is planted in a particular soil, in a particular location for three, late, three years. Somebody say three years. For three years, it's been planted in a particular soil, in a particular location. That's mean the fig tree has been faithful. The fig tree is planted in a particular soil, not for one year, not for two years, but rather three years. It is planted in a particular location, in a particular place, and it's been faithful there. And there's about somebody in this place that God has planted you in a particular position. He has planted you on a particular job. He's planted you in a particular career. The fig tree is planted. It's planted in a particular place and it's been planted there for three years. It's been faithful at that particular location. But Jesus shows up not expecting it to simply be faithful but Jesus is looking for fruit from that fig tree uh, he, he shows up and the fig tree is planted uh, the fig tree is planted but it's not productive uh, Jesus looks at the fig tree and there is no figs on the fig tree it is planted uh, it is known for being faithful but not being fruitful uh, and nothing is most frustrating in the kingdom of God that when you get believers who are planted but are not producing. Uh, I said God didn't plant you on that job just to look good. Uh, he planted you there so you can be productive. Uh, he planted you there so you can be fruitful. He shows up uh, and there is a fig tree that is planted. Uh, the fig tree is faithful. It's been planted in a particular location, uh, in a particular arena. And for some of you, uh, God has planted you in the media arena. He has planted you in the church arena. He has planted you in the corporate arena. He has planted you because promotion does not come from the east or the west. It does not come from the north or the south. It comes from God. God plants you. God plants you. The Bible said, blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree. I wish I had somebody in here. And he shall be like a tree or she shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Don't miss that. It's not one river. It's many rivers. That means God is going to give you a different source of income. Lord help me. It's not going to be one source. It's going to be many sources. So when one source dries up, you got another source. When one source dries up, you got another source. And that's why you never cry over a dry up source because if you got the source he will give you another resource God I, I, you see your job is not your source your car is not your source your boys is not your source your house is not your source Jesus is the source of your joy Jesus is the source of your peace so if you ain't got no source if you ain't got no resource if you still got the source you can praise him this is just for all the single women up in here. That if God never send you a Boaz, you still got a praise. Because your shout, your shout and your praise ain't got nothing to do with your marital status. Your shout and your praise ain't got nothing to do with the car you drive. Pull your sister by the head and say, if I lose it all and still got King Jesus, I got more than enough to start all over. Oh, for where? Yeah, he, he, he's the source. Somebody holler, he's my source. Come on, say, he's my source. He's my strength. He's my joy. He's my peace. He's the lily of my valley. He's the bright and morning star. He's the rose of my Sharon. He's my kingsman redeemer. He Come on, sit down. Y'all gonna mess the DVD up. Ah, huh? yeah, yeah. He is planted or she is planted uh, by the rivers of living water. Oh, water. And her leaves shall not wither. And whatsoever she do it shall prosper. Touching him and say, I'm about to prosper. Whatsoever she touch, wherever she puts her feet, everything she puts her hand, she shall prosper. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Hallelujah. Ah, yeah, yeah. Her leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever she doeth, it shall prosper. The ungodly and not so, but they are like the chaff that is gone away. And listen, my brothers and sisters, God plants us. And he plants us because he knows that there is a capacity in us. There is an ability in us to produce. And so he plants us in particular arena. You are where you are because God planted you there. It's not by accident. It's by divine providence. I said it's not by accident. It's by divine providence. Devil tried to stop you. Demons tried to shut you up. But when the hands of God is on your life, he will move you from the back of the line to the front of the line. He will open doors that no man can close. He will sit you in heavenly places. He will let your enemy pay your bill. He'll let your haters celebrate you. He will let down. Come on up in here. When God you but when God plants you uh, he also is looking for a return in his investment come on sit down we just talking uh, he's looking for a return on his investment uh, because he simply does not just want you to be faithful uh, and you ought to celebrate the fact that wherever you've been planted you've been faithful uh, uh, you've been faithful all this year long uh, but God told me the next six months of this year you are going to move from being faithful to being fruitful uh, God I wish I had uh, he said if you thought you shouted the first six months of this year you're about to go crazy the next six months uh, because what he He's about to do in the next six months is going to be greater than what he already done I need somebody to look back and shout over what he did but I need you to scream for what he's about to do because I have not seen this have not heard He's about to move you uh, from being from being faithful to fruitful. Uh, so he shows up, Mama. He shows up. He shows up at this fig tree, and you and I, the fig tree represents us. Uh, he shows up at the fig tree, uh, and the fig tree does not produce. Uh, for three years, he's been sure. Come on, sit down. Y'all gonna get tired. I promise. Uh, he shows up. He shows up. He shows up at the fig tree, uh, and the fig tree has been planted uh, in the same place for three years. Uh, and yet the fig tree has been faithful, uh, but it hasn't been fruitful. Uh, and one of the suggestions uh, that whenever you find a fig tree uh, that is simply faithful, but it's not fruitful. Uh, the owner of the fig tree said, uh, let's just cut it down. Now, I want to talk about two things. Uh, first of all, I want to talk about the fact uh, that he shows up uh, and the fig tree has not produced fruit. Uh, and there is two kinds of fruit that is represented in scripture. First of all, there's the fruits of the spirit uh, that we talks about in Galatians chapter 5 uh, that he talks about when you and I, uh, when you and I are in Christ Jesus uh, that Galatians chapter 5 talks about uh, what is known as the fruits of the spirit. Uh, now don't miss this. Uh, I am not the producer of those fruit. Uh, I am simply the bearer of it. Okay, y'all missed it. I told you, don't miss it. And yeah, I am not the producer of love. I am not the producer of joy. I am not the producer of peace. I am not the producer of gentleness. I am just the bearer of it. So the more I abide in him, he produced love out of me. He produced joy out of me. So when I love you, I love you with the love of Christ. I cannot love without the Holy Spirit. I cannot have joy without the Holy Spirit. Now I can have happiness without the Holy Spirit uh, but I can't have joy uh, and happiness has to do with the happenstance around my circumstance. Uh, but joy ain't got nothing to do with what's going on outside of me. Uh, so it doesn't matter if it's raining. Uh, it doesn't matter if everything is falling apart. Uh, I still got joy uh, because this joy I have, uh, the world didn't give it to me and the world can't take it away. Uh, so my joy joy ain't got nothing to do with my car ain't got nothing to do with my house ain't got nothing to do with my job if i lose all of that and still got the source of my joy the source of my peace the source in galatians chapter 5 i am not the producer of it i am the i am the come on say i'm the bearer of love I'm the bearer of joy. I'm the bearer of peace. 
peace. When I show up, love shows up. When I show up, joy shows up. When I show up, peace shows up. I am the carrier. I carry it. I don't conceive it. I, I said I'm the carrier of it. I'm not the conceiver. Are y'all still here? That, that's the first thing. But the second fruit is found in John chapter 15. And in John chapter 15, it talks about a different kind of fruit. In John chapter 15, this is not the fruit of the Spirit. He said in John chapter 15, if you abide in me, and my words are abide in you, thank you, abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine no man no can you accept you abide in me go ahead to the next verse and particularly in verse number five and he said I am the vine and you are the branches he that abided in me and I in him the same bring it forth much fruit for without me you can do nothing and in John chapter 15 it talks about three kinds of believers or three kinds of fig tree there's first of all there's the fig tree that doesn't bear any fruit and he said when I find a believer who is planted but is not producing he said I'm going to have to reassign them he said, I remove them. I reassign them. If you're in producing on this table, I'm going to reassign you at that table. Y'all in here. If you're not producing in this ministry, I'm going to have to reassign you to another ministry. Because you're not simply here to be faithful. You're here to be fruitful. Secondly, he said, when I find a believer who is producing food, I don't reassign them. I prune them. Ooh, y'all missed it. When I find a believer who is not producing, I reassign them. When I find a believer that is producing, I'm going to prune them. Some of you, you know why you want to shout right here? Because you thought that it was the devil that is punishing you, but God told me to tell you it was God who is pruning you. Oh, yeah, 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 y'all missing. Touch it and say, God is pruning me. Now you know pruning is painful, but after he gets through pruning you, you're going to produce. Lord, help me. I need somebody to shout over the pruning process. I need somebody to scream over the pruning process. Pull your sister by the hand and say, God is pruning me. And the only reason why he's pruning me is because he's trying to get some more productivity out of me. Because God don't prune me if I ain't got potential. I just said something. I say God don't prune you unless you got potential the reason why he's pruning you is because you got potential he said, he said when I find a believer who is not producing I reassign them when I find a believer who is producing I prune them because I want them to move from not just being a bearer of food but I want them to bear much food so I move from no fruit to fruit to much fruit and later on in John 15 there is more fruit. Don't miss that. I move from no fruit to producing fruit to much fruit to how many of you still want more? Come on, holler in here. Tell him and say, I'm about to move from much to more. Come on. Come on, say, I'm moving from much to more. If you thought I got blessed the first part of this year, I'm moving from much to more. If you thought he delivered me, I'm moving from much. Can you pull your sister hand and say, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. He's about to move me from much to more joy, more peace, more love, more favor, more hope. Somebody open your mouth and tell God, I want more. Yeah. So he shows up, he shows up, he shows up, he shows up, and there is a fig tree. Can I bow this mic stand right here? Can I bow this mic? Okay, in fact, give me one of those mics, stop. one of those mics there. So he shows up, and there is a fig tree. Thank you so very much. There is a fig tree right here that is planted. Come on, sit down. Y'all going to get tired. Uh, there's a fig tree that is planted. Uh, it, 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 it is planted in a place where it is, it is being faithful but not 
fruitful. It's not producing. And the Lord raises the question. He said, why should I leave it planted here? Why should I leave it? Because it's simply taking up space. Why, why should I leave it here? It is not producing. And the suggestion is, cut it down. That's what Luke chapter 13. The suggestion is, cut it down. Move it out of the place. Uproot it. But before he uproots it, grace stepped in. And Grace said, wait a minute. I know she hasn't produced in three years. Y'all didn't hear me. But this year, she's about to produce more than you ever see. Hey. Somebody slap five at your neighbor and say, Grace just showed up. You ought to slap five at five people and say, Grace just walked in the door. Grace is God giving you what you don't even deserve. Grace is God opening doors for you. They shouting for your car. They shouting for your house. Somebody holler, Grace! He said, wait. He said, wait. Before, before you uproot it, before you Pull it out of the ground. This is what I want you to do. I want you to give it some TLC. I wish I had some tear. Uh, Y'all missed it. Tell you never said neighbor. In the next 30 days, God's about to give you some TLC. Do y'all know what TLC is? He's about to give you some tender love and care. Somebody scream. he said because don't miss this this oh come on y'all sit down i promise you you're gonna get tired look what he said mama he said maybe don't miss this he said maybe the reason why the fig tree hasn't been producing is because i haven't loved it enough he said so this is what i'm gonna do i'm gonna dig around it I'm going to give it some more sunshine. I'm going to give it some TLC. I don't know who I came to Canada to prophesy to. God said, it ain't your fault. I'll take the blame. But when I get through loving up on you this year, you're going to produce something greater. You're going to produce something stronger. You're going to produce something wider. Pull your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, if you thought God blessed you last year, eyes have not seen is him that her he's about to give you some T L He's about to love upon you like you've never been loved up before. If you thought Boaz loved you, wait till he get through loving you. If you thought y'all ain't ready for me, somebody God's about to cut your toenail. He's about to run your bubble bath. He's about to open doors for you. He's about to supply your need. He's about to make ways for you. Somebody open your mouth and give God some TLC praise in here. He said, I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna give us some, I'm gonna give us some. I'm gonna love her, but and if she doesn't produce after all of that, then you can cut it down. Now don't miss this. Come on, sit down. Y'all gonna mess the DVD up. <laughs> now don't miss this. He leaves. I need one more mic. He leaves, he leaves the street. He leaves the street where the fig tree is planted and now he shows up in the synagogue. Oh God, the synagogue is another word for the church or another word for conference. He leaves the street where there's a fig tree that is not producing. And he said, I'm going to give it some TLC so it can produce. This is just for 50 of y'all. God told me to tell you, you're not going to produce in church. You're going to produce outside church. Okay, yeah. Hey, here's what God told me. He said, you're going to shout in here, but you're getting ready to slay out there. God. Oh, oh, okay, okay. We got to get out of here. Pull your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, you got 30 seconds to shout in here. Because when you leave this conference, you're about to slay out there. Come on, tell your neighbor, say, I'm getting ready to slay. 
I'm getting ready to slay. I'm getting ready to slay. All the slayers holler at me. All the slayers scream at me. Pull your sister by the head and say, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. You about to slay. Slay! Slay! Go get that business! Go get that million dollar! Go get that company! You about to slay! Your greatest production is going to be outside these four walls. He leaves. Now he leaves. He leaves the. Come on, come on, y'all. He leaves. He leaves the street. And mama, he's now in the synagogue. And the fig tree is. Don't miss this. The fig tree becomes a woman. In the street, it's a fig tree. But in the synagogue, it's a woman. And the woman tells you why the fig tree didn't produce. Because there's a woman in the synagogue who has a spirit of infirmities for 18 years. You can't produce when you got infirmities. God, I wish I had some. The reason why the fig tree hasn't been produced. Remember now, the fig tree is in the street. But when you go to the synagogue, the fig tree is now a woman. And the text says that while Jesus is teaching, there's a woman in the synagogue who has a spirit of infirmity for 18 years. Now, I don't want y'all to tear this place up. I think you got enough insurance to cover this place. But just look at your neighbor in their eyes and say, neighbor, can you tell me what year we in? Okay, y'all missed. Okay, y'all missed it. Okay, they didn't catch it. Say, neighbor, after 2018, every spirit of infirmity is going to be broken in your life. I said, every spirit, every hindrance, every devil who's been messing with you, every demon. Eighteen, eighteen, eighteen years. 18 years, 18 years, 18 years. The fig tree hasn't been producing for three years. She hasn't been producing for 18 years because there's been a demon that's been assigned to stop her from producing. But after the end of this year, every demon, every chain, every struggle has been broken. I need you to pull somebody by the hand and say, neighbor, when this year is over, if you thought I was free, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Look what it says. She's had a spirit of infirmities for 18 years. Don't miss, come on, sit down. And she was bound together and could in no wise lift herself. Don't miss this. She is, look what happened. Because of a spiritual attack. It shows up in the physical. She is bound together or bend over and can in no wise lift herself up. Don't miss that important first right there. She is bound together and can in no wise lift herself up. Basement, I promise I won't work you too hard. Bring me a chair. She is bound together. She is bound together and she can in no wise, thank you, and can you, you can take this table, I won't need it. She is bound together and she is bent over and she can in no wise lift up herself. The mere fact that the text says that implies that she tried to lift herself. 
The mere fact that the text says that she could not lift herself implies that she tried. And who in here has not tried? What frustrates the child of God, listen, what frustrates you sometimes is that you are anointed to lift other people but you can't lift yourself. Okay, okay, y'all don't believe me. Go ahead, put your hands under yourself. Put your hands under, come on, put your, try to lift yourself. Go ahead, go ahead, try, put your hands. Try to, try to lift yourself. Why can I not lift myself? I got enough faith to lift you. I got enough anointing to lift for you. I got enough Holy Ghost to believe God for you, but I can't believe God for even myself. I got enough power to cast the devil out of you, but I can't cast it out of myself. Why? Because Christianity is not self-help. Okay, y'all missed it. If you can do it for yourself, you don't need God. You need God to do for you what you can do for your. She can in no wise lift up herself. That's what the power of connection. You are sitting next to somebody because you've been anointed to lift them. You've been anointed to encourage them. You've been anointed to pray for them. But the same power that you have to lift them, it's in you, but you can't lift yourself. You've tried. That's what self-help is all about. Trying to lift yourself, trying to encourage yourself. She can in no wise lift herself. And the text said, look at how grace shows her. And Jesus saw her. Bend over with the spirit of infirmity, the text says, and he saw her. And not only did he see her, but he spoke to her. Oh, he called her. That's verse number 12. He, he saw her. He called her. And when Jesus saw her. Now, I would shout right there because bend over, he saw me. <laughs> Messed up, but he saw me. You see, most people only see you after you come out the mess. But we serve the kind of God who sees you while you bend over. Now here's where you want to shout. If he sees me bend over, what he going to do when I straighten up? God, I wish, I wish I had somebody tell your neighbor. Say, neighbor, if he sees me and I'm bend over, what you think he's going to do when I straighten up? Because in the next 40 seconds, everything that was crooked, he's about to straighten it up. Every place that was crooked, he's about to straighten it up. The Bible said... He opens his mouth and he says to her in the words of Bishop T.D. Jakes, Woman, thou art loose from your infirmity. Don't miss this woman. Thou art loose. And, and listen, oh my God, that man from West Virginia, that man from West Virginia, he prophesied that, that Bishop T.D. Jakes, he told us that, listen, 18 years ago, 18 years ago, he told her, he said, Woman, thou art woman thou art loose from your infirmity and my god we got the t-shirt we got the dvd we've been to the conference that's where you heard me the woman thou art loose but god told me to tell somebody here that woman thou art loose is not your destiny it's your itinerary Okay, y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Okay, let me see if I can make it plain. Uh, on my way here, I had to go through North New Jersey. On my way, I live in Baltimore. And so I left Baltimore, had to travel to North New Jersey. But Ontario, Canada was my destination. Uh, 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 North New Jersey is my itinerary. It's on my itinerary, but it's not my destiny. It's just a pit stop. It's not my final stop. You all hear me? I'm just trying to tell you. So he says, woman, thou loose. But I get excited over the next verse. It said, then he laid his hands on her. He laid his hands on her. And immediately she was made. Ooh, y'all missed it, right? I told you this year, God's about to straighten it out. God. 
I said this year, God's about to straighten it out. In fact, he's about to straighten three things out. It's right in the text. First of all, he's about to straighten everything that's crooked in your life up. He's about to straighten every messed up place in your life up. Wherever there's been an infirmity, wherever there's been a sickness, wherever there's been a demonic attack, wherever there's been a struggle, after this conference, he's going to straighten it out. I need somebody to straighten your hands out because God's about to straighten it out. And the Bible but said the moment he straightened it out she began to glorify God I need you to stretch it out and lift it up I need you to stretch it out and lift it up I need you to stretch it out and lift it up I need you to stretch it out and lift it up I need you to stretch it out and lift it up I need you to stretch it out and lift it up I need you to stretch it out and lift it up lift up your heads all ye gates and be ye lifted up ye everlasting door and the king of glory shall come in who is the king of glory the Lord Lord God Almighty, uh, pull your neighbor by the head uh, and say, stretch it out uh, and lift it up. Uh, I dare you to stretch it out. Uh, every sickness is leaving. Uh, every infirmity is leaving. Uh, every struggle is leaving. Uh, every bitterness is leaving. Uh, every anger is leaving. Uh, stretch your hands out uh, and lift it up uh, and open your mouth uh, and give God a biggest shout. Uh, give him your glory. Give him your praise give him your honor let the redeemer of the lord say so stretch it out lift it up stretch it out lift it up stretch it out lift it up and give god a shout come on let every devil hear you let every demon hear you let every witch hear you open your mouth and stretch it out he's gonna straighten me out he's gonna straighten me out wherever there's an infirmity put your hands on it wherever there is wherever there is wherever there's been an attack wherever you've been struck whatever it is he's going to He's going to do what? He's going to stretch it out. The text says that immediately he laid his hands on her and he straightened it out. That's the first thing. God told me, I'm going to straighten you out. I'm going to straighten every crooked thing, every messed up thing, everything that happened to you. Whenever it happened to you, I'm going to straighten it out. The text said the moment she stretched her hands out and she glorified God. The Bible said, and the religious. That's the next verse. Verse number 14. It says, and the rulers of the synagogue were angry. They were upset. They were filled with indignation. They were upset. There's somebody on your row that when you begin to stretch it out and glorify God, they're going to get upset because you're praising God too much. They're going to say, it don't take all that. They're going to try to quiet you down. But tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, for 18 years, I've been holding it all in. For 18 years, I've been quiet. But in the next 30 seconds from now, I'm about to holler like I never lost my mind. I'm about to scream like I never lost my mind Pull your neighbor by the hand And say neighbor If you don't need God to straighten anything out in your life Just sit there and look cute But as for me in my house Everything I got inside of me I'm going to praise him Like it's my last chance Tomorrow is not promised Next week is not promised You got to praise him Like it's your last chance I'm going to give you 18 seconds I'm going to give you 18 seconds to make your haters mad I'm going to give you 18 seconds to make the devil mad open your mouth and give God your best praise your best shout your best hallelujah your glory come on make your devil mad make demons mad make the devil angry and open your mouth come on zion come on daughters of royalty give him your biggest shout give him your biggest praise the devil got to back up after this he got to back up after this because your praise is your weapon your praise is your of the synagogue answered with with 
anger because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day. And they said, what's up with this? Why didn't he not heal on any other day but the Sabbath? They were angry and upset. And Jesus turns around, verse 15. Ooh, I love this part. And Jesus turns around. The Lord answered him and said, you hypocrite. Tell him, it's a neighbor. You don't have to answer your enemies. God will answer for you. God, I'll see you. Okay, y'all miss your cue. I said, you ain't got to answer them on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram. Just stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Because the battle is not yours. It's the... Whose battle is it? Whose battle is it? Whose battle is it? Whose victory it is? Mine. It's the Lord's battle for my victory. It's the Lord's battle for my victory. Somebody give God a victory shout in here. He said, he said, he said, you, you bunch of hypocrite. You bunch of hypocrite. Here's the second people God's going to straighten out. He's going to straighten me out. But secondly, he's going to straighten everybody, every gossip, every lie, every jealousy, every envy. He's going to straighten every person who plot and plan to destroy you. Ooh, that's some word for somebody. He said, I'm going to straighten you out personally. I'm going to straighten out the people around you. Out. I'm going to straighten the people around you. I'm going to straighten your children out. I'm going to straighten your marriage out. I'm going to straighten your co-workers out. I'm going to straighten people on your job out. I'm going to straighten people on the side of you who can't shout because you're breaking out in a shout. Who can't stand the fact that God keeps on blessing you. He said, you ain't got to lift a finger. You ain't got to point a finger. You ain't got to send them an email. Just do this. And the more you do that, he gonna straighten them out. This is for every lie. This is for every gossip. This is for every bitterness. This is for every jealousy. This is for every hater on Facebook. Every hater on Twitter. Every hater on Instagram. Come on, straighten your hands out and give God some glory because he's about to make your enemy your footstool. He's about to make your enemy your footstool. Here's the last thing. Here's the last thing. He going to straighten me out. He going to straighten everybody out. And Isaiah closes with my text. It says, and in Isaiah, I will make the crooked place straight. I'm through. Um, you know, I'm from Trinidad. I came to this country over 18 something years ago with $32 in my pocket. And I left Trinidad and said, I'll never go back. I did. So I never go back. Because if you read my first book, Dancing with Broken Bones, is when I left Trinidad, I left with a broken bone. I left with a brokenness in my life. Particularly, I was raped at the age of 14. Uh, my mom died at an early age, had no clue who my daddy was. And that left her a, a place in me, an opening for the enemy. A spirit of infirmity. For some of us, it's in our body. For some of us, it's in our mind. For some of us, it's in our heart. And I carried that for over 42 years till I met Bishop Jakes. And God told me while I was preaching that woman died loose, he said, I cannot heal what you conceal. He said, the longer you conceal it, the longer it will take to heal it. And God began to do a deep surgery within me. He began to do something, deep surgery in me. And God, God straightened the place where the wound had taken place. He had straightened, he had straightened me, me, me out. Because you know we blame everybody, but we got to look in the mirror and say, God, I need you to do something in, in me. And then he straightened the people around me. And there was one other place that God said, I want to redeem. I want to redeem. And I want to redeem. And my God, it's not by accident that last year, Memorial Weekend, which is this Memorial Weekend in Trinidad, in fact, 22 years ago, rather, at Memorial Weekend, I took 150 people to Trinidad. 
I left Trinidad about 18 years ago. I said, I'll never go back. I'll never step foot on that island again. I meet people and they say, oh my God, I love your country. I want to go to your country. Help yourself. I said, oh my God, your country is so beautiful. Help yourself. Because the only thing that I saw was not beauty. It was everything that was negative. I buried my mother there. I was raped there. experienced some things there. And so if I had a million dollars, I might have blew up the whole island of Trinidad. I didn't want Trinidad to be on the map. I got rid of my accent. Won't cook anything from Trinidad. Are y'all hearing me, ladies? And yet God told me two years ago, he said, I want you to go back. And he said, I want you to go back to the very place that caused you the pain. The place that calls you the pain is where birth your purpose. Purpose is birth through pain. You want purpose, but you can't stand pain. Wherever the pain is, is the indication of where your purpose lies. And so two years ago, I went back and not only did I take 150 people back there, I bought the very place that caused me the pain. Y'all ain't hearing me. He redeemed the place he redeemed the place that now I go back to Trinidad three times a year because the place that caused me the greatest pain is the place that produced purpose and my greatest praise I told God, wherever I go this year, I just want one word for the nation. And he said, here's the one word. This year, I'm going to. And I don't know who I came for today. But there's a place in your heart, there's a place in your mind, there's a place in your life that you need God to. I don't know who it is, but just wherever you are, I don't care what seat you're in, you just pop up where you are. Just pop up. Just pop up. Just, just, yeah. In fact, God told me there's 18 of y'all. You, you, try to, you try to do it yourself. You try to do it yourself. Yeah. I see you. Bend over, but I see you. 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 You standing next to that person who's standing, I want you to just stretch your hands towards them. Come on, stretch your, stretch your hands towards them. Stretch your hands to break every chain. Hey, did they tell y'all I can't sing? I can't. Don't even, don't even look at me or think I'm going to sing. I can't. No, that's not my gift. Break every chain. Break every chain. Come on, that's who you are. You, you need that praise. Just Come on, y'all just stretch your hands towards them. If that's your girlfriend, your best friend, your ace moon coon, if I were you, I'll stand with them. I stand with them. I stand with them. I stand. In the name of Jesus. I stand with them. I stand with them. Let them play. Don't sing yet. Don't sing yet. Don't sing yet. Just let them play that melody. Would you release a prayer for that person who stood? Would you release that prayer? Like if it's you, if that's you, that's you. Come on, release that prayer for them. Release that prayer. Somebody need God to straighten your children out. If that's who you are, you ought to just stand where you are. I'm standing for my children. I'm standing for my marriage. I'm standing for my co-worker. I'm standing for my job. I'm standing. I'm standing. I'm standing. I'm standing. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, I'm giving you 18 seconds. God's going to do it in 18 seconds. He's going to do it in 18 seconds. He's going to do it in 18 seconds. He's going to do it in 18 seconds. Here we go, 17. Come on, lift it up. Come on, 16. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Hey, shut down. I'm seeking day to day. 
Break every chain. Break. 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 Come on, right there, right there. Hey! Hallelujah. Twelve. Come on. Eleven. Come on. Ten. Come on. He's breaking unforgiveness. He's breaking every bitterness. He's breaking every addiction. Come on, pray for them. Pray them through.